hello it's time to embark on our journey it's a journey to some it might be just traveling to some it might be just going from one place to the other but in the bible there are two types of journey there's a journey that takes a specific time and there's a journey that you do from day to day the dictionary says it is traveling from one place to another usually taking a long time or a trip or it says also a distance a course an area traveled or suitable for traveling a period of travel a passage or progress from one stage to another now in first kings 19 verse 4 when elijah was running away from the threats of jezebel it says while he himself went on a day's journey into the wilderness he came to a broom bush sat down under it and prayed that he might die exodus 3 verse 18 says the elders of israel will listen to you then you and the elders are to go to the king of egypt and say to him the lord the god of the hebrews had met with us let us take a three-day journey into the wilderness to offer sacrifices to the Lord our God. That word journey used there several times in the scripture, you will find that it's often used in reference to a specific time. That word journey used there comes from the Hebrew root word darak, meaning to tread, to walk, to string a bow by treading on it in bending to bend, to draw, go over, guide, lead forth, or to thresh. Now I want you to notice the words that are used here. And if you consider it, the, the word journey is used here for the Hebrews who are leaving Egypt, taking a three-day journey into the wilderness to offer sacrifices unto God. This journey has a time factor. There's another Hebrew word, Masa. It means a departure from striking the tents to march, not necessarily on a day's journey, but to be on your way. And Deuteronomy 10, 11 says, Go, the Lord said to me, and lead the people on their way, so that they may enter and possess the land I swore to they and their ancestors to give them. Some translations say, lead the people on their journey. That journey is the journey that happens from day to day. Whenever they camp and they're going to strike their tents and get up and go to another point, they would go on a masa, okay? And I, I believe, I'm not gonna swear to it, but I believe the word Mecca comes from it, where you take a pilgrimage. To the word Darak, it struck me that to string a bow by treading on it, you know, like you would see images of archers who are, they put their foot on the bow and they draw back the string and then they notch the arrow. And I said to myself, sometimes when we're going on a journey, there is a lot of oppression. We feel as if we're being stepped upon, held back. But you, I want you to understand this, the bow, has to be bent to its full extent for the arrow to fly far and find its mark. So for the bow to be bent, there has to be a treading down, drawing the bow to its full extent. And when the string of the bow is released, that means the arrow can soar, can fly far and find its mark. I want you to consider that that arrow is you. Do not worry about who is treading you down, oppressing you, and holding you back. You to get it, you know. Because the person who is holding you back, let's start with treading you down, really is notching you in a boat to send you far. The scripture says, when a man's ways pleases God, even his enemies will find favor with him. Okay, even his enemies. I want you to get that. At some point, hallelujah, what is treading you down has to be removed. And what is holding you back has to let you go. That is only for a time. 
as I was making these notes, it occurs to me why we should pray for the blessing of our enemies. I know a lot of people have a lot of problem with it in the world. Why should I pray for my enemy? I usually do it out of obedience because that's what Jesus said. Pray for your enemies. Bless them that persecute you. And then as I was doing and preparing for this teaching, I realized why. Someone who is treading on you, treading upon you, holding you back, they cannot move forward. They must stay where they are to keep you where they are trying to hold you down. And if you pray for your enemies to be blessed and successful, they have no choice but to move from where they are to appropriate their blessing. They can't do this if they are immobile. Persons who are intent on stopping the progress of others are intrinsically selfish beings. They only want to see their success often at the expense of others, but they will not pass up the opportunity to progress. Thinking that they have stopped your progress, they will move on to achieve theirs. What they did not realize was that in that treading you down, they notched you as an arrow in the bow. And in stretching the bowstring, thinking that they are holding you back, they ensure that when they let go to pursue their progress, they have set you up on a trajectory of success. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Romans 8.28 says, And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those that love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. It's not going to allow your purpose to be diminished, to not come forth, because he designed you for a purpose and a season. But what must you do during this time of oppression? Firstly, cry out to God and believe him for honoring his covenant with you. The one he made with the blood of Jesus. The children of Israel cried out to God and he not only saw their oppression, but he heard them. He had to respond because of the covenant he had made with Abraham. For a teaching on this particular covenant, check out my video, Spiritual Maturity. Now God will respond to your cries. If you believe in God, no situation, no diagnosis, no military threat is beyond God. So said by Sarah Yoheved Rigler. She's a blogger. Check her out. Do not worry about God. vengeance. That's the next thing. You're in a problem. You're being oppressed. You're crying out to God. Don't worry about it. It belongs. Romans 12, 18 to 21 says, If possible, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. So whatever you can do to keep the peace, you do it. Verse 19 says, Never take your own revenge, beloved, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. But if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him drink. For in so doing, you will heap burning coals upon his head. Verse 21 says, Do not be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good. But don't let your motive be to burn coals upon, to leave heaping coals upon their head. Your motive must always be love. I want you to remember, Jesus went to the, the cross to die for us while we were still his enemies. Always keep that in mind. Romans 5 verse 10 says, for since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son while we were still his enemies, we are certainly saved. Sorry, we will certainly be saved through the life of his son. The next thing you do while you are being oppressed is to prepare for the journey. Notice that the children of Israel were given great provision to prepare themselves for the journey. Exodus 3.22 says, Every Israelite woman will go to her Egyptian neighbors or to any Egyptian woman living with them and ask them for gold and silver and jewelry and for their finest clothes. The Egyptians will give them to you and you will put these fine things on your sons and daughters. Carry all this away when you leave Egypt. As a result, they had the ability to pay their way as they crossed through the land of Edom as mentioned in Numbers 20, verse 19. It says, We will stay on the main road, the Israelites replied. And if we or our herds drink your water, we will pay for it. 
there will be no problem. Only let us pass through on foot. If you feel like you are being held down in your job, do your best to excel where you are. And in the meantime, polish your resume. Also, pray for your oppressor to be blessed so they can be moved. The point is that you must be prepared for the move. Your faith must always be backed up by action. I always say, if you are believing God for a house, purchase a door lock. If you are believing for a car, make space for it. A driveway, purchase something for the car. Save what you can towards it. In other words, you demonstrate your faith with action. The next step is to be ready for the signal to move. Get ready for the massa, the getting up, the pulling up of your tents. Pull up the tent pegs, pack what you need for the journey. You will know when it's time to move, when others start to tell those in authority over you who are oppressing you, please let him or her go. And they do. In Exodus 10 verse 7, Pharaoh's officials literally start to disrespect him. Because they're saying, how long will you let this man be a sneer to us? Let the people go so they can worship the Lord their God. Do you not yet realize that Egypt is ruined? No, I mean, you can imagine. Big Gumption, it took an official to say that to their Pharaoh, who they were supposed to virtually treat as a god. This official is saying, listen, we've had enough of this. People who are oppressing you, the people that see your oppression won. The people that see how they are treating others. The, per the people that see God moving on your behalf, even if they're on the side of your oppressor, is going to say, listen, you know, sister, you can't succeed against this person. Let them go. Let them go. And the next step is to move with haste when the signal is given. I hope you enjoyed this massa, this part of the journey. But we are actually going on a darak for a season, for a period. We'll be on this topic, the journey. See you next week on the Matri. Get ready to move again. <laughs>